this is, this is, this is. Welcome back, friends. Brand new episode of the podcast starting right now, uh, 4.39. And I just want to say I'm excited. We got a, a live stream coming up, actually live on the internet, December 23rd. That's Friday night. That's the eve of Christmas Eve. And you can find us at mxpeaks.com. You can find us at uh, on our Facebook, on our Twitter, on our Instagram, on our YouTube all of the above, wherever you like to go as a person, whatever makes you feel better, you can go see us there. Um, probably the more Instagram, it's a little weird because it's just, you are you have to be on your phone. And Twitter, I guess you could watch it on your computer or TV from Twitter. But I think th if you want to play it from your TV, it seems like either Facebook or or YouTube, YouTube for sure, uh, would be a, a great option because they make it really easy. But I may be wrong. Maybe no matter what, it's easy. So you guys decide. You do your thing. All right. So um, that's December 23rd. We're going to play you know, holiday songs, Christmas songs. We're going to play you know, just a bunch of favorites and, and, and taking your requests as well. And um, I've been looking online and, and – senior comments and have taken a few and added those to the set. So hopefully uh, we, we make as many people happy in that regard as possible, but either way it's free. It's free, 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 bring your friends, bring your family, get together. Um, the only thing you might have to buy is some, some drinks or food or whatever to, to fuel up before the show. And um, we're actually playing at 6 30 PM PST. That's Pacific standard time. Here on the West Coast, we're in Bremerton, Washington, for this show. And we'll be starting around 6.30. Um, I would turn on, usually we, we start about 20 minutes, 15 minutes early, just to make sure that every, the feed's working and everything's going well. Um, so we'll do that. Uh, or I would do that if I were you anyway. We'll, we'll, we will turn on and, and do our stuff. So I'm excited. I'm excited to do it. Uh, we've got the guys in practice, getting ready for it. And um, I hope everybody is having uh, a beautiful and stress-free holiday season. <laughs> I can't even hold a straight face when I say that because it's just like, I don't know if there's any time of the, of, of the seasons, you know, it, it could be winter, it could be spring, it could be summer, it could be fall. It's like, it's stressful for a lot of people. So um, if you found a, play, a way to not be stressed out, bravo to you. That's amazing. So... Another, uh, something that I got a little too stressed out over and then dialed it back quite a bit and became not stressed was we released a song for my daughter. My daughter released a song. I, I, I wouldn't say we released. I recorded it with uh, Ryan Furlot. He recorded it. I I helped. Let's say that. You know, I was there. I was there. But didn't do anything, you know, when it comes to the song. She wrote that song. No words were changed. No arrangements chords were changed nothing so uh, really proud of her for that and, and really excited to to just have that every every single Christmas you know MXPX didn't put out a Christmas song this year um, but we're doing this live stream so it's kind of our, our gift to you guys so aside that um, this song this this Christmas time song I feel like is uh, an offering from the Herreras even though it's not from me it's from my daughter and she's nine, and uh, this is her first real like public release. She's released a couple songs here and there, just like live versions, and it's just it's it's not really the same as going into the studio, recording, putting out a uh, you know making a video, putting that out on youtube and then she has uh if you want the audio versions on Bandcamp, things like that so like this is it was more of a process you know than she's done in the past um which is cool you know it's like okay we didn't do a lot there's no ads running or you know no money was spent in that regard just you know we paid ryan to to record it but um you know that that uh it, it was a good start to what could be nothing you know you just never know I'm not sitting here going, oh, 
say there should be a, a singer now and you know a singer songwriter and and so her career starts now like that's not really the point of this to the point was to see if she enjoyed the process to see to have her experience the the process of it and i knew she wanted she wanted to have people hear the song you know so um all of those those missions were accomplished and um, I'm glad to see that that a lot of people really enjoyed the song in in our community. So thank you guys for for your comments and all the love. If you if you heard the song, it's called Christmas Time. You can um, you can go check it out on Sailor Sailor Herrera is her YouTube page, but um, Sailor May is what she's kind of going by as a musician, just because it, it's kind of nice. It's her middle name, Sailor May um, M A E, not M A Y. Um, and that's it, you know, like I didn't, you know, MXPX isn't promoting this or anything like that. I'm just a proud father and I really want her to, to be able to experience being a kid, you know, even though it's a different experience than when, uh, some of us, uh, around our age grew up, you know, we didn't have social media. We didn't, we didn't know what we know now a lot of, in a lot of ways. And to be honest, she's still a kid she doesn't know a lot of things about the world and that's okay um and i didn't want to you know teach her too much about the music i really want her to discover her own path and her own you know i'm not going to let her fail i'm not going to let people rip her off but barring that i really want her to discover her own way of doing things and she already obviously kind of like is influenced by my songwriting my voice the way I put together uh, sentences and things like that, uh, you know, but she still has, you know, something so innocent. So it's very, very similar to like when I started, I, I felt like I was very, very um, innocent. Let's just put it that way. Um, but, but it's, it's great. She's nine. There's no reason for her to join the Mickey Mouse club yet. You know, like, uh, I don't think she's gonna gonna do that. Like r after after we recorded that song, we were there like all after all morning into the afternoon, and then she left like mid afternoon. And I took her home, and she was exhausted. But as soon as she got home, she switched gears, did something else. She was fine. She wasn't exhausted anymore. So it's just a matter of like kids kids get tired of doing the exact same thing all the time, and so you know it's it's nice to see her trying different things not just music but she's also doing taekwondo she got her her white belt and then she got her three stripes on her white belt i don't know what those are but the road to yellow or green belt um i'm not exactly sure what the belt is next <laughs> i'm not an expert uh but it might be uh it's a yellow or green belt i think um and they're gonna get that uh coming up Actually, maybe today, the day this podcast comes out, they might. I'm trying to, I'm trying to go see that. You know, I really want to see them do their test. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, I'll let you know next week if they get their belt. Um, aside that, Christmas is coming up soon. The, the the actually live on the internet show is coming up soon. Uh, I want to say thank you, everybody. The the was enthusiastic about uh, my new bass that came out, came and went. It's all sold out. Thank you, guys. Um, we we have plans to do another bass at some point. There, this won't be the last one. This was just like a small run of this idea that I had. But ultimately, I have something else in mind as well. So stay tuned. If So don't worry if you missed out on on the uh, the 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 base that just happened, and I think the price will just be the same. I mean, it's expensive, and I, and you know people get mad. It's so expensive, but it's like you just don't you don't have to buy it. You know, it's it's a base like that, an instrument like that is definitely not for everybody. Um, it's uh, for me, it's a tool. It's definitely it's something that like I don't know. I mean, I have a different perspective on instruments because I have so many. Like I literally have like probably over 20, maybe more than that. Um, but to me, they're valuable in different ways. You know, um, I bought a lot of my bases when they were, you know, 
when when the price for a stingray, an Ernie Ernie Ball stingray was, I want to say it was like a thousand dollars, eleven hundred dollars maybe, and then it crept up to like twelve hundred, twelve fifty throughout most of my my career, early career, and only really in the last five years has it crept up over two thousand, um, and that's just the price of. Of, of custom instruments you know you're paying for a one-of-a-kind thing that was literally handmade by people in san luis obispo california and uh they do great work so i appreciate you guys i love ernie ball and uh we'll, we'll do some stuff in the in the future for sure so let's get to some voicemails what do you guys think let's see what you guys want to know about or want me to talk about let's go Okay, I didn't plug in something. Hold on. <laughs> Scott. I heard you're Scott. Scott, Scott. Here we go. Let's, uh, let's try it again. Hey, Mike. This is Scott, originally out of Spokane, now out of Phoenix area. Saw you guys uh, a couple times in Spokane when I was a kid. Uh, this guy, Herb Landis, used to put on uh, Christian shows. I saw you there. I saw you open for uh, Blink-182 at a dog track. I think, and then uh, most recently saw you in uh, in Harbor in uh, Santa Ana. Uh, anyway, long time. Question that I had: um, curious about the finances of bands, right? When you're kids, you're probably you know splitting, but the door and splitting merch. And at some point, you have employees. You obviously are doing MXPX a lot, so I'm kind of curious. Without getting into specifics, right? I don't want to know uh, too much of the details, but how does that work? How do you work out, like, the splitting of it and it becoming a business as opposed to a bunch of buddies making music? So, appreciate it. Thanks. Scott, what's up, man? Great question because everybody does it different, you know, really. I, th I think. I assume. Um, we, we started out, you know, I started the band with Andy. You know, it was like me trying to get get together and Andy Husted was my my good my best friend at the time and this was well this was 1990 maybe 91 or something like and so I was just doing I was like I, I had a tape worth of of songs written it that I had recorded in my bedroom on a boom box and I don't think any of those songs made it to MXPX maybe one I don't know but once I started writing songs, I was just writing and writing and writing. And then I was like trying to get a band together. And I'm getting there, Scott, to the band finances. Uh, and I went through a lot of people, not a lot of people, a couple people, before I found, you know, somebody that was willing to, one, could actually do what I, you know, play the thing I wanted you to play, but also... Um, somebody that's willing to put in the work in the in the hours. And ultimately that's really kind of the reason why Andy didn't stay in the band is he just wasn't really willing to put in the work. Um, and so we just had to find somebody that was willing to put in the work. And, and Tom Wisniewski was just barely, just barely, <laughs> but no, he was great. Um, so early on we, we had a band fund. It was just band fund. Um, like most bands, you pool your money together, you buy, you buy stuff like merch, T-shirts, things like that. Um, gear, kind of everybody kind of buys their gear on their own when you're starting out. Usually, you know, your parents help you buy like a guitar or a bass. My mom um, paid half of of a bass that I bought. My first bass, it was a PVT forty. She paid half, and I paid the other half, and we bought it at a pawn shop. It was one hundred and seventy five dollars. Uh, and I, you know, it was great. I, I used it for a long time. It was so heavy, but, um, that's how you, you know, you, you, you get something, you, you move ahead. I mean, same with skateboarding for me, skateboarding. I wasn't as good at as, as playing bass, but I started out with just like a really, really crappy, not even a pro board, you know, you know, a, a grocery store kind of thing. Anyway, I'm getting off topic back to the finances. We, uh, we pull our money together and, after a while, you have it. You have 
not enough. There's never enough money. Let's just, that's rule number one. <laughs> There's never enough money. But, you know, you can pay to put gas in your vehicle. You can pay, you know, this or that. It really wasn't until um, we got signed to a label. We had to, like, make a business. And so when we got signed to Tooth & Nail Records, we had to make a, a business out of our band. And that's when things get weird and complicated and we did just about the minimum you should do um, and didn't, we weren't very organized. We were just kids, you know, and my mom was probably helping me do all that and doing most of it for us, but she didn't necessarily know either. No, no, sli no slight, uh, slight on her, but she didn't really know either. She's just doing what most people do is figure it out. So great, right? Um, we made an LLC. I don't remember how early, it probably wasn't that early. It might have been even after we got a manager. Creighton Burke was our first manager. Um, it might have been after that. He's like, you guys need an LLC. We're like, a what? Uh, okay, so I am the president of our company, the MXPX company. That's not what it's called. but um, And, you know, for a long time it was like Tom's the – Sec secretary, you know, the treasury, secretary of treasury or something like that. Um, yeah, and so on. You, you, know, you just have to, like, appoint people with, with titles. But now you don't really have to have a title. You can just be member, which I prefer just to be a member. <laughs> uh, you, you probably do need titles, actually. I might be wrong on that. I think I'm just talking about member when it comes to the banking system. I'm a member uh, of the MXPX banking group. Um, it sounds crazier than it is. It's just our account, the account that we hold in the bank. I'm a member of that account. Um, so anyway, still pulling our money together. We started at some point, once we started touring full time, we started taking salaries. So we would just have, uh, for a long time, it was just like, okay, how much money do we have at the end of the tour? All right, cool. We can pay off our amp that we just finance. I can buy a base and this and that. I don't have to put it on layaway. Like I put my first Stingray, my first Ernie Ball Stingray on layaway. So I was right there with you kids. Um, and I might still be. It depends on what it is I need. You know, it's like uh, put a studio on layaway. Let's do that. I've been saving my whole life. Um, so as we got busier and busier or we got a little older we were uh college age but working full-time as musicians um we got salaries you know what it was probably like a thousand a month or like you know i don't remember what our first salary was but it was it wasn't much and slowly over the years it would tick up tick up to like you know 1500 or something like that 2000 i think maybe at some point it was but um, you know, and we've completely restructured all that kind of stuff since then. But, um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of different ways to do it, but as far as, um, we do, like, we make things much more simple. Like we just overpay everybody that works for us, uh, or try to anyway. Um, we overpay, I don't feel like it's overpaying, but I feel like we just, we pay people that work with us a lot and that makes, you know, I still feel like I make plenty of money even though people get paid. So like when Tom and Yuri play shows or do, you know, recording sessions or whatever, they get paid for all that. They don't just show up for free or, you know, whatever, like they get paid for everything. And, and that comes in the form of bonuses or, you know, this or that. It's, so it's not really on a schedule like, like it used to be, but it's probably a lot more. So it's, it's good. Um, but at the same time, it's like, you know, we can't stop or else all of this will go down. You know, um, the system sort of perpetuates itself in some ways, but in some ways you have to feed it. You have to feed it fuel to pop out people that care, you know, people that will listen to your songs, people that want to buy your merch, people that want to come see you play. It all is connected. And, um, you know, I know a lot of people do their finances probably in a lot of different ways. We've done them in a lot of different ways over the years. We've done, we've had, you know, business managers outside. We've had business managers inside. Um, now it's almost everything we do is in house. We have outside publish publicity. We have outside 
um, outside, what, like, um, I wouldn't even say outside, uh, publishing kind of stuff. But, you know, the more we work with people, the more inside they get, and then they become more and more part of the team. So there's, there's, there's definitely some things you can go outside your group with, but the more you can do on your own, the more you will accumulate. The more you own, the more you will accumulate. The more you, like the more gear you have, the less you're going to have to rent, that kind of thing. You know, it's like it all adds up and it all is nickels and dimes that add up. Um, and so I think that's partly why MXPX has been successful is because we're doing so much work on our own. And, and, and for those reasons, maybe we don't have as shiny of a, this or that, you know, um, but overall our, our undercarriage is strong. Our system is, uh, agile. It can move, it can, it can change if needed. Um, but you know, the, the bigger MXPX gets as a band, you know, it, it presents new problems, new financial problems, new, new problems of how we find, uh, liquidity to invest in we invest in ourselves by the way we invest in shows invest in new music invest in merch and supplies for merch invest in people because we have to have people help us with all this stuff so it's been uh it's been a realization that wow this is this really is a company it's a small company but it is it's a real company like we do even we're a band which is almost separate from the company part you know the band is like when i when I show up at practice, band practice, I'm not thinking about the company. I'm not thinking about usually about merch. I'm not thinking about this or that, which maybe I should be, you know, but I'm thinking about let's get creative. Let's I'm hanging out with my friends. This is the band part. I just go back into that band boy thing. Um, but, you know, during the day when we're not practicing, when we're not together, I'm trying to, you know, help make this company run a little better and, and make things happen. And geez, it is, it's overwhelming for one. So doing this podcast, you know, the thought of it gets overwhelming when I'm actually doing it. It's not overwhelming, but it's just the fact of, I, I feel like I would let you guys down if I don't do the podcast. Um, so even if I, even if I, you know, do 10 minutes, like I did, you know, the other day, a couple of weeks ago, um, it's better than nothing just to check in just to say hi to you guys so Scott I hope uh, I, I bet that was more of an answer than you thought I'd give but um, finances are very complicated as you all know and so find somebody find somebody you trust if you're gonna if you're gonna have them handle your money people because I almost don't trust anybody I trust my mom I trust my fam my family, my wife, but I mean, it's I trust other people outside of that, and and I don't want to say who, but I trust plenty of people outside of that. But it is it is something different when it is your bank account. You know, I just hear horror stories like uh, Dane Cook, the comedian. He was doing arenas, selling out arenas all across the country. Had millions of dollars. Had figured out how to do this independently, so he wasn't beholden to the big corporations. He wasn't beholden to what some CEO says you need to do. He was renting arenas, which is amazing because that's kind of what we do for some of the shows we do. Not all the shows. Some Sometimes we're just at the House of Blues or whatever, but sometimes we're like renting out a, a place and we're doing a show there. And it's crazy work, but it's so rewarding. Like I said earlier, the more you do, the more it come back, come the more comes back to you. Um, and they always find they, you know, people, corporate, I, I, I say they, and I mean like the people in charge, corporations, uh, corporations are usually first and then the government after that because the government kind of takes cues from whoever has money and who who's paying them. Um, here I am. Uh, <laughs> Mike's back into, uh, I don't know what year it was. Let's say 2014, 2013, 2000. 15, Mike, um, those years of the podcast were very political. I was talking a lot about my opinions and, and just what was in the news and stuff like that. And since then, I think this podcast has been um, a safer place when it comes to the stress of life. It's been a little bit more about being positive and, and tactics about how we, we do better. And um, 
every now and then I let it slip. So I apologize for that. Bob Bob uh, McKnight, who does uh, the the editing for the podcast and the, the producing and stuff, he I learned from him that that you know not everybody wants to hear about that stuff. So man, good times. I'm kind of tearing up a little bit just thinking about it. No, not really. All right, next. Hi, cousin. Um, this is Johnny Girl. I was calling because I was listening to your show, and Mom was telling me the other day that you guys are going to be coming up on your 30 years. And I just wanted to say how awesome it is that you guys have been punk rocking and rolling and doing that since then. Um, and I also just wanted to say thank you for um, being such an awesome person and being so true to yourself and kicking ass. Um, I was also reminiscing looking through photos and found pictures of my first actual punk rock show, which just so happened to be yours when I was eight years old at the Warfield. And I can't remember who it was that opened up for you, um, but I do remember that Simple Plan um, was one of the bands that was with you guys also at the same time. So it was really neat being able to have those experiences being that young. Um, but anyways, just want to say love you and congratulations on 30 years. Bye. Thanks, Johnny girl. Uh, that's my cousin, Johnny. She's, uh, you know, she's, uh, from my kin down in California. Um, thanks for calling. I, I definitely didn't expect that. Thank you. Very cool. Uh, I love all y'all. Miss you guys. Can't wait to see you guys. It's been way too long. Thank you for the 30 years. Congratulations on that. Um, we t Yeah, we, we are 30 years old as a band, and it has been insane. Uh, it's been a, a crazy, crazy life, and it's kept me very busy, for one. But um, eight years old at the Warfield. I remember that show, in fact. Uh, we played the Warfield a few times. We played um, with The Offspring. We've played, uh, well, we did our show the show you're talking about with um, Simple Plan. It was, that tour was Simple Plan. It was co-headlining. So they must have probably opened or supported that night and we closed. But we would flip-flop. Sometimes they would close. Um, we played, uh, that was the same tour that we played the Paramount in Seattle, Washington. And of course we closed that night. Uh, great spot. And because I remember that show, I remember that tour, and I remember it was Sugar Colt that opened that tour. If I'm not if I'm not mistaken, it was Sugar Colt, Simple Plan, and MXPX, and there might have been an, an opening band, but I want to say it was just us three. I really do. Uh, if I'm wrong, somebody please let me know. Call in, leave me notes in the comments wherever you're at. Uh, I would love to know. Um, Johnny girl, can't wait to see you guys again. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Send my love to the family. Um, all right, let's go. Let's go to the next. Hey Mike, <clears throat> I'm from Toronto. Uh, I've been a fan of since Pocanacho, like I say. Uh, y'all been with my life and, uh, still to this day with the podcast and music, just like the whole kind of life advice. It's, honestly much appreciated and really mentor like um anyways i got a question it's about the creative process um this might be kind of weird but like let's say you finish an album or a project or maybe even a single take a break afterwards you know you're feeling good accomplished do you ever feel like anxiety towards the next idea or project that you're going to undertake, like you're worried, like you, you know, you don't got nothing left in the gas tank. Um, maybe that's just like a self-esteem issue that I deal with, but um, usually it resolves itself by just committing time, you know, sitting down and just really setting aside time to work on stuff. Um, I don't really subscribe to the idea. Breaking up, bud. You're breaking up. I hope you come back. I'm going to let it roll. Hans, great question so far, by the way, already. So if you don't make it back, I don't think it comes back. Hey, I'm going to assume that I, you got cut off. But this is enough for me to talk about, Hans. Um, creative process. You know, 
I love talking about the creative process. You know, I heard uh, Stephen Pressfield talk about how he gets over this exact thing, the anxiety of, of what do you do? And he was talking in context of even vacationing, like how do you vacation and then come back? Because momentum is something that's very hard to get back once you lose it. I don't care what you're talking about. Momentum, period. Momentum. So as a songwriter, as a singer, as a, you know, if I haven't sang in a while, it's going to be a little less, not as good as if I've been singing all the time. Now there's limits. You don't want to wear it out, right? You, there's a there's a, a ratio. But creative process, the best thing, you know, when I heard him, Stephen Pressfield, he's a, an author. He wrote um, The Art of War. Sorry, The, the War of Art. Sorry the war of art. Um, and it's about resistance and I've talked about it on the podcast a bunch and it's about that feeling of, I don't, I don't really want to do that. You know, I, I don't want to start. You, you want to, but you don't want to, you know, like it could be something as simple as like exercise is the easiest thing to, to equate it to. I don't want to work out today, maybe tomorrow, tomorrow I'll work out. I'll, I'll really get to it. You know? So <laughs> it's like, uh, that's resistance. And I think it's all, it's all connected. So back to creative process, when you're, what are you saying? What he does is, is he's always got the next thing in mind before he finishes the book he's working on. So same thing, if you have an album and, and I don't do this consciously, I just always have enough ideas that I haven't finished yet that it, this basically does that same thing for me. And so when you're working on your album, say MXPX is actually working on an album right now. So we're working on an album. And after that album is out, I might have that feeling. But I know I will already be writing songs. And I've already got a bunch of songs, song ideas. And I've got a, a you know, I don't have a song, t you know, I don't have an album title for the next album after the, the new album that's not released. But just knowing that I have some songs that I could work on, you know, they're not ready. They're not done. They're not, we've never practiced them, that kind of thing. But um, that's all, that's all you need, you know, just always leave a couple or what I like to do is when I'm, even when I'm working on the album that I'm working on right now or whatever, I like to be writing, you know, if I have time, um, right now I'm not actually writing much at all. So I'm just in collection mode where if I have an idea, I'll write that down on my notepad and get to it later, you know, a voice memo, record a little melody. Maybe I'll pick up a guitar and do the same thing or a bass line. So I'll just be like in here the other day, I was just like recording myself and I posted it on Instagram and I was just messing around. It's not like a new song or anything. It's just a, a lick. It's not a song that existed previously, but it probably is not a song that'll ever exist. And, you know, just doing that is kind of cool is just collect ideas. And then later on when I'm working on the actual album or the actual, whatever I'm doing, collection of songs, this, that I've got my memo, my voice memos. I've got, um, to go a little deeper into what I do is I've got on my voice memo on my phone, I've got different um, different folders. One says starters, so starters, and then you know I've got one that's like sailor songs. So sometimes she'll be doing something like, "Hey, I'm recording this. Do that again," you know, <laughs> and I'll just have it for her for later, and I'll send it to her. Uh, and then I've got different song titles, different ideas. Boom, 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 boom. That to me is like it's like unfound gold gold that I can e extract later. And, and I feel like hopefully that just will help you right away. It's like, okay, I just need a couple song ideas in waiting, in waiting. Um, hopefully that helps you. Um, aside from that, I mean, I think you can apply that to anything. Like if you're going to finish a book, have your next book idea already outlined or, you know, it doesn't have to be written. It doesn't have to be done. The work comes later, but just the idea for it. I think that's what, what, really matters. And, and to your actual question about, do I ever get anxiety? Will I never have a good idea again? 
Yes, I do. I do sometimes think I'm never going to have a good idea again for a song. And it happens after every single album. So you're not alone. But I feel like now that I have continually written better songs after having those feelings and those thoughts, I realize that's a lie. I'm lying. There's somebody in my head lying to myself telling me, doubt, doubt yourself. Don't try. Don't even try to write, you know. And that's resistance again. You know, we talked about the war of art. But uh, don't believe the hype. You know, you're only, like you said, if you spend time on it, if you spend time thinking about songs, about lyrics, about ideas, you're going to come up with something unless you're just truly brain dead. And, you know, but don't try to write the best thing. I mean, write your way out of it. If you if you feel like I don't have any good ideas, write down the bad ideas because I do that. And, and perfect example here, Sailor, my daughter, she wrote such a good song, that Christmas song. It's so good. No changes to be made. She wrote another song just the other day. She's like, I wrote another song, but it's not as good as the, my Christmas song. And I'm just like, one, how do you even know? Because maybe it's just good too. Um, it probably isn't as good because that Christmas song's really good. But I told her, you know what? Write it anyway because not every song can be the best song. That's just true. I mean... Not every song can be the best song. That's why we have set lists and we have albums and we some songs get left off the album, that kind of thing. I mean, it's, you know, it's subjective because it's an artistic thing, right? But, but yeah, I mean, it's something we all struggle with as humans. We get up, we wake up in the morning and we have these negative thoughts and these, we dwell if we, if we don't get up right away and jump to work or jump to the, you know, doing something with the kids or whatever it is. I don't know what you're doing. Uh, jump to school or whatever it is, you know, brush your teeth, do something. But sometimes I will sit with those thoughts. I think sit with those negative thoughts and go, why, why now? Oh, because my mind is quiet. So those, usually those thoughts I think are the things that I really need to fix in life. Those are the things I need to work on and coax into the direction they, you know, I'm, I'm working on. But that's a very natural thing for, for all humans. And I feel like people that are creative feel it more because they're putting pressure on themselves to be creative and to be not only creative, but sometimes creative in public ways. And, 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 I, and I know there's people that are non, non-musicians that are still creative, even in their corporate jobs, um, they've got to impress the boss. They've got to try to do this or that. They they want to do a good job because why else are they? You know why are we here? You know to to make cool things. I don't know uh, to to live a happy life. But how do you live a happy life? To be fulfilled. You know to to feel like what you're doing matters. That's why social media has gotten so huge because people flock to I don't know caring about what other people think right like all right what does so-and-so think what does so-and-so think what's happening now that's natural it's a natural human thing of course right but it doesn't mean we have to like live that way all the time right like I, I think it's just important to recognize things it doesn't mean see I recognize that I'm on my phone too much right doesn't mean I'm not on my phone too much <laughs> you know it's like it doesn't change you know it could change it could change sometimes I mean maybe it does change in subtle ways but but like it pulls you back in you know pulls you back in like be working be get something done a little every day I don't know who who it's a quote by somebody but Tom Chichilla always brings this up and he says you know when I'm having a really bad day I really just think about this quote and it is get a little something done every day. And I don't know if that's even the exact quote, but that's basically the gist of it is just do a little bit every day. You know, like if you did something, you, you can't, it's going to move the ball forward a little bit because t today doing the work that we do, especially in the band stuff, it's no different than project management. You're like trying to get all these people together to like do one thing or a thousand things, like so many different things, like, you do this, you do this, we all are going to do this. And 
that's being in a band and today for sure, you know, um, it sounds terrible to be honest when I describe it that way, but I feel like that's honestly modern life. It's modern life in at least what I've seen in the, in the modern world, in the culture we live in here in the U S for most people, you know, you're online, you're seeing the crazy news. You're seeing a lot of gaslighting. You're seeing a lot of back and forth. And, and it's just not something that is healthy for us, you know. And that contributes to why you might feel like your creative process is, is it's harder to get going because we have all these distractions. Again, resistance. You know, there's good distractions and there's bad distractions. My kid coming up to me and, and, and wanting my attention is a good distraction away from me getting the job done. But it's like, but kid, don't you want the lights to stay on? And they don't understand that. Like, and so you can't live your life like that. It can't be a either or. It has to be some push and pull, I really feel like. Um, I did this crazy diet back on a tour one time, and I was so weak. A crazy diet meaning it was like the old, it was like, what was it called? The, the ultra cleanse or no, the... Um, it had a name. A lot of people would know it, but it's like where you drink half syrup and half lemonade or lemon juice or something. Um, it's not lemonade because there's no sugar in this. But um, anyway, you're just drinking. That's it. Nothing else. And I was getting weak for the shows. Like I was like not playing as well. And Tom Wisniewski was like, a little whiz. He's like, hey, man, like, are you okay? Because... It feels seems like you're like really weak, and I missed. We were, we had a day off in Calgary um, at at the the guy that we rented our bus from, our bus driver in Canada. We had a day off, and we went to his house, his bus barn, and they treated us like family. It was amazing. Like we we got this huge meal, and we had been there before, so I'd been there twice. This is the second time, and I was like, it was like a huge steak dinner, all this. And I was like on day four of this cleanse where I hadn't eaten any solid food for four days, starving. And I was like, no, I'm on this diet. And And I never forgot that. Just like, I never forgot how stupid that was that I didn't, I didn't eat anything because I was on this stupid diet. And it's like, why? There's no, it wouldn't change where I am now. I don't think, you know, and it's just like, so because of that, it's really changed a lot of how I live my life. It, it, you know, I, I kind of try to seize the opportunities when they come up. And then when the opportunities aren't there, I try to make the, the decision on the daily. So the, the right decisions on the daily. But when it's not the daily, I got to go for it. And, and you know what? It's funny because I say that, and, and it is the daily a lot of times. Like, let's go here. Let's do that. Let's do that. At that point, then I will start to say, okay, no, I'm good, I'm good. But you're starving, and there's this amazing steak dinner that's homemade by these Canadian people that are awesome. And uh, and I didn't, I didn't eat it. Like, what? I, I always, like, thought, I thought I was disappointed in myself when I reflected back on that situation. And I was like, why couldn't I think in the moment rationally? And that taught me a lot that I really do need to learn from my experiences in more than just living them. I need to look back at them and go, okay, that was too much. I I was too principled, I guess, you know, because I was like, nope, I said I was on a diet, so I'm sticking on the diet, blah, 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 blah. So, all right, creative process, love it. I had, there's a bunch of voicemails, but I think I'm going to just skip skip some and and we'll do them next week but uh i just don't have a lot of time today we'll do two more okay two more here we go hey mike love the show this is dan from louisiana uh i had a tumble down question you guys played shreveport one night it was great and you guys actually came back to uh in my wife's house to to stay and one of your requests was you wanted a place that was, you know, non-smoking, which we were non-smoking. But I thought about it later. We put you up in the guest bedroom, which was my sister-in-law's room at the time. 
and she smoked cigarettes. So I was thinking later, man, I bet that bed and everything smelled like cigarette smoke. Um, so I just wanted to apologize for that. I did not think about that at the time. And do you remember that? All right. Thanks for all you do. Bye. Ben, I do remember you, and I remember your house, and I remember that show, and I remember it was a great night, great time. Um, I remember the room was, I guess it was your sister-in-law's room, but it seemed like it also had, like, kid stuff in it. Not as much as other places I've stayed with kid stuff, but um, I don't remember the smoke because it wasn't that. It must not have been that bad because I stayed at this other guy's house one time, and it was so smoky that I nearly thought I was going to die. Like, it was, it was bad. So, uh, you know, you can rest you can rest easy now, Ben. You're off the hook. But I do remember that. It was awesome. Good times, man. Uh, I'm glad you're still still doing well and, and send out love to the family. And thanks again. I remember hanging out in your little kitchen. Um, you fed us. We had We had a really nice meal at the venue that was, like, homemade. And some of your friends might have brought stuff. I'm, I'm, I can't remember like the details of who brought the food, but I'm trying. Uh, but if I'm not correct, if I'm not, maybe we ordered from the restaurant, but it was real good. And then we ate at your house later that night or something. I, I could be wrong, but uh, those were those were crazy times, man. Those are good times with those tumble down tours. Uh, we were back, you know, I felt like a kid again, you know, we were back like doing our first tours where we were like on floors and, uh, sleeping at people's houses all the time and taking in their hospitality. And, um, it's a real different way to, to live life. Uh, I tell you that And and it, when you get out of that, when you're not doing that as much, it's a lot harder to be normal and to talk to people. I feel like you, you get, you get out of practice. Uh, anyway, let's do one more. Uh, Thanks for the call, Ben. That was that was awesome, awesome. All right, let's uh, let's do one more. Hey, Mike, tis the season. This is Derek from Lexington, Kentucky, Lexington, Kentucky, uh, and I uh, just uh, busted up punk rock Christmas record last night, and I want to know mm. if uh, you got any good good stories about any of those songs you recorded throughout the years that were, you know, kind of holiday songs. Uh, whether it's writing them or recording them or, I don't know, whatever. Whatever cool stories you got. All right. Uh, Merry Christmas. Happy holidays to you and everybody. Thanks, Derek. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays to you. Uh, Christmas, yeah. I mean, let me think. Punk Rock Christmas. Christmas Day, we recorded that in another song um, at Bear at Big Bear? No, not Big Bear. Bear Creek. Bear Creek Studios. I think that's it. Um, it's, been, it's been a minute. But that place is amazing. It's a, such a beautiful place. And Steve Kravak flew up and recorded us. And we busted it out. We had, um, on Christmas Day, we had, you know, a organ playing on it. I can't remember who played on that. I think it's on the credits somewhere been that long i can picture like being in the control room but i can't it's like i see the face of the guy playing but i can't make out it's all blurry it's like being in a dream or something you just can't quite make it out you don't know what's happening but that was uh that was a great little session that we did for a and m and they paid for it well ultimately i guess we paid for it but um <laughs> on the the recouping end. Um, but what we did was we recorded the Loneliness is Bliss EP by Arthur at the same time because Neil was our tech, so he was there working for MXPX. But then we're like, we finished this Christmas song up in no time. Now, can we just set up, and since we're all set up, can we just like play Arthur songs and just record them? So we recorded live to tape. all the. So what you hear on loneliness is bliss which is our first ep we have an ep and we have watch the years crawl by which is our full length and that by the way is now sold out on vinyl i'm pretty sure i think there's a few cds left if you want a cd but it's it's on streaming you can go you can go stream it but 
the EP was the first thing we had done aside from like a demo thing or whatever. Uh, and we recorded it live to tape and man, that was an experience cause I, I did not sing that well. Like I feel like if, if we would do it now, I could do so much better, but it's another just block uh, heavy lifting. Like let's do this really fail at it. But I say that as I hear echoing in my headphones, not really, but I hear people thinking to themselves as they listen to this going, you know what? That loneliness, loneliness is bliss. EP is my favorite thing that Arthur ever did, you know, because it hit at a, at a time in, in our lives, in some of our lives that was a cool time to hear those songs, I think, you know, and, and we didn't care that they weren't perfect. I mean, you listen to that now compared to like modern music. It's a joke how bad the tuning is, how bad the singing is, you know, like there's nothing tuned. There's nothing re, you know, re sang. It's all just live in the studio. So, you know, you learn from those too, but like, that's, that's something that, that I feel like was a, a really big stepping stone for us in realizing we need to get better. We need to be better. We need to like be better alive, be better. I need to be a better singer. Um, maybe that's when we, we ended up taking uh, a series of voice lessons and Tom, Yuri and I all took voice lessons about three or four voice lessons, um, in Seattle. And, uh, you know, to this day, I'm honestly glad we did it because it helped me learn a little bit more about the voice about the diaphragm and about, you know, strengthening the diaphragm and strengthening and keeping your voice for a long, long period of time. So I am not religious when it comes to anything, but uh, maybe when it comes to a few things, but um, hot sauce, maybe I'm religious when it comes to hot sauce. But um, even then, no, I, I just don't have any hard, fast rules uh, on hot sauce either. But <laughs> Just, you know, I, it doesn't matter, right? That's what I'm trying to say, you guys. Punk Rock Christmas, no real no real story there. We recorded that song. I wrote it. We recorded it. I was just trying to be fun. Um, <laughs> it's funny because, you know, Punk Rock Christmas is kind of like talking about punk rockers being poor. You know, that's just no way, no way around it. So like everything's like, I ride the bus now just to get downtown. And I feel kind of weird singing that because it's like, you know, I don't know why, you know, <laughs> you know I don't want to, I don't want to bring, I don't want to, the reason why I guess I feel weird about it a little bit. And, and I don't, I'm not saying I'm not going to sing this song. The song's great. It's a great song. It's a great song. I love the song. Um, but it's funny when I really think about it, cause I'm like, am I making fun of, people that have to take the bus, you know, um, nothing wrong with buses. I lived on buses for many years, but it was a little different, you know? Um, so that's all, that's all I was trying to say. It's like, am I being a jerk? No, it's, I'm having fun. We're having some fun. So punk rock Christmas, another fun one. Um, you know, <laughs> Christmas songs, to be honest, like they're like one-offs and that's why I wrote that uh, hold your tongue and say Apple song. It's really a joke. It's a joke on myself because I feel like a lot of times I could be a real a-hole and I wrote a song about it. Boom. That's it. I know I talked about it last year, but, uh, I hope you guys, hope you guys remember that and go, Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Got you. Um, I'm just excited. I'm excited for 2023, but we're not there yet. I hope, uh, hope it goes slow. The end of 2022. Let's go slow. Let's enjoy it. Let's enjoy the, the live stream that we're going to do um, on the 23rd and enjoy your family, enjoy your friends, enjoy whatever it is you do, your work. If you can enjoy it, if you can find some way, you know, a lot of times we, I hate something that I'm doing, even if it has to do with MXPX, you know, and I don't hate doing mail order or anything like that, but I might hate doing it every day for a full year, you know? So I just try to put it, in perspective what I'm doing. The fact that I don't have to do something constantly all day, every day, excuse me, hiccup, excuse me, all day, every day, all the time, you know, 
I'm grateful for that because I'm the type of person that needs variety in my life. And I feel like my son's that way. My kid, you know, sailors that way as well. And, uh, maybe kids are that way. Maybe that's what it is. I, I'm just like a kid still, you know, I've, I've figured out how to be an adult slash kid, but, um, yeah, I, we'll, we'll figure it out. But, but I, I just think that we're just going to move forward. We're going to do the best we can. And, um, I'm very fortunate. I try to put it into perspective that, that, uh, I get to do something that, so cool. I, I thought it was great because um, this is a great, this will hopefully crystallize my point that I'm doing very badly at making. Um, Geno Smith, quarterback for the C Seattle Seahawks, NFL football. He said, you know, when somebody asked him about, you know, hey, now that you're doing really well, you're a starter, your stats are all, all you know, MV MVP quality, um, what do you feel about your time, you know, as, as a second string quarterback, you know, on the bench and, you know, somebody that didn't get the opportunities that you have now. And he said, I didn't actually even, I just read the quote and re, didn't listen to the interview. So I don't know if he said more than this, but basically what he said was, you know, there's a lot of people out there that would feel lucky to be in the position that I was in when I was in second string. And it's like, Dang, yeah. I mean, we're all we're all, we are all at different levels. You can't compare yourself to other people. You you can only compare yourself to yourself. Are you moving forward in life? And that doesn't mean keeping up with the Joneses. It doesn't mean having the you know the family and the job and the, the you know that those things are great, but not for everybody. You know, so I don't know. I think towards the end of the year we got to think about we got to we don't have to do anything, but I try to think about my life and put it in perspective and go into the new year with a new understanding of what I want to accomplish going forward. And usually plans are already pretty much made. Like we're going to do a new album or we're going to do this tour, or these shows, or, you know, we could play live on the internet. So, uh, you know, things like that. And I'm going to make some merch. I'm going to send some merch out. You know, like, I'm not saying that I'm saying like truly like in your life, aside from just work, what do you, is, are things going right, you know, and, and if not, how can, what can be done, uh, what should be done to make a change? That's his, I don't like to get too lovey-dovey, and I try to, like, save that for the songs, but, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I just thought, you know, it, it, we can do, we can accomplish so much. Like I said, do, do a little bit every day. And it won't be so overwhelming. I get so overwhelmed. But you just bring it back down to just do a little bit every day. Boom. We got it. You got this. I got this. We got this together. We'll find it. All right. Next week, um, I'll probably do another podcast. I, I don't know what's going to be next week. We're going. I'm going to take a few days off coming up this week. Um, not really off. I'll have my phone. But I'm taking a little family trip. We, we always take, try to take one every year and it's like two, two days. Um, and, uh, aside that, I'm just going to be hectic doing crazy, crazy planning for, for some projects coming up. So much love to all y'all. I hope you're doing well. I haven't seen much TV lately. That's why I haven't talked about it. Um, I have been watching this show called C now and again, I just watch it in little bits. It's a, it's on Apple TV plus tv or apple tv plus i don't know whatever but great show jason momoa is in it he's awesome um it's about if the world was blind if everybody in the world was blind it's like crazy but anyway uh very violent don't watch it with the kids um but but it's like not a must see sorry i mean it's a it's a good show but it's not a must see um like like some of the shows that i've talked about I would say uh, Ozark. I mean, it, as long as it's a type of show that you like, it's a must-see. Um, it's a kind of, kind of a crime, sh you know, mob show. But uh, mob show kind of takes the the wrong turn. But it's not a. It is a mob show kind of. But um, Severance, Severance is an amazing show. Um, that show, <sighs> you got to see that show. I'm hoping that comes back in 2023. But until then, you guys, uh, 
Christmas is coming up. December 23 is coming up. Uh, we'll be live, and we'll see you there. Um, thank you for your orders. We've been sending out orders every day. Appreciate you. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. And um, until next week, shout out to Bob McKnight for uh, all the work you do, man, my man. Thank you. Bob, uh, I talked to him last night, by the way, and he was in rare form. I'm sure they're going to talk about it on his podcast. So tune into the Bob and Katie show if you if you really care. All right. Peace out, y'all. Cheers. <laughs>